he came down to hunt with me and my brother and Jeff one more time. We went down in December and we went scoter and old squat hunting and brand hunting. So that was fun, you know, nice little trip. Jeff was uh, kind enough to have us down again. Now that was close. Twice. It's warm out anyway. Off the bow. Five or six. They're, They're banking. Coming. They're coming. On the single, on the right, on the right, on the right. Shoot over me. Don't worry about it. Shoot over me. Hey, finally got one. You're a nice, that's a nice drake there. Finally got one. What a beauty. Waiting for the nice ones. Good looking bird. Nice sir. Thank you. Thank you. Watch it, man. There's some down there. That was an immense big bunch of birds right there. You can say that for sure. You guys know bluebells out here, huh? We had a couple. We had a pair cut through early. Yeah, we had a couple buzzes. Uh, George Zaraka is an Avery Pro Staffer, and uh, he likes to hunt. He, uh, he actually runs a produce farm during the waterfowl season it offers him a, quite a bit of opportunity to go you know, to get out every day. He doesn't guide, but he's always uh, always taking a bunch of his friends and, and family along. So uh, that's, he, he gets out quite a bit. Is it? It's time to get fishing. It was a good time. We shot some old squaw, like I said, some scolder. I shot my first brand down there with uh, with Jeff and our buddy Bill Stahl came down and hunt with us. And uh, it's just, I don't know, it's just, it's just a different experience. You know, there's a lot of heritage here in waterfall hunting. And there's definitely a lot of heritage down there, but somewhere, somewhere over the years it, it got lost up here. You know, it's kind of like no one really cares about it as much. It's like taboo. There's not really a lot of people left that hunt or diver hunt so much. And as opposed to down there, it's still huge. You know, it's tenfold the amount of guys doing it. And so that was kind of nice to see, you know, the way they embrace it down there. We, you know, we got to go to the Harb de Grace Decoy Museum and, you know, see all that. And it's just neat. You know, like I said, there, we definitely have the heritage up here. You know, you talk to the guys in the 50s and 60s that used to hunt and back in the heyday. And, but somewhere along the line, it, tailed off here and for some reason it kept going strong down there so that that was nice to see it, it it's kind of like a history lesson it's, it was pretty cool remember this one man <laughs> and they were singing oh wrong one you think I'm gonna sing now aren't I you? hope so <laughs> Speed out film. Yeah, we went down to Assateague and it's just it's bizarre. It's just like a bunch of wild horses like hanging out in a marsh. It's it's pretty weird. We saw a couple of them but they're far away so we didn't get great pictures of them. <laughs> <laughs> But they also have a bunch of white-tailed deer down there and uh, sicka deer, which is like a basically it's like an Asian elk species. They're tiny though; they only weigh like 70, 80 pounds. Come here, Mr. Deer. 
We saw a few of those. It's pretty neat. It's pretty nice down there. It's just on the bay. It's just nice scenery. It was kind of wild to see horses just hanging out in a salt marsh. It's pretty neat. Wild horses. You know, his dog Coop was his main dog that he uses most of the time. She's pretty much amazing, you know. We got in with a good bunch of guys, training for a hunt test and field trials. Coop was a uh, 26 months old. She was a uh, AKC uh, master hunter, and she's also qualified age in field trials, AKC field trials. I don't know about all that stuff, but I know when you shoot a bird, she goes and gets Coop. it. She's pretty, pretty amazing to watch work. He brought her up here, and, you know, on the hunt with me. And, Pretty much all conditions, way long retrieves, 40, 50 yard retrieves, and you know, basically blind retrieves and the waves and stuff. So that was nice to see. You know, you can definitely tell the work he puts in is rewarded by having a, a dog like that to work with. So that was nice. She's all but perfect. I mean, she sits there and doesn't bark, doesn't yelp, doesn't break early for the most part. I mean, she's just on point when it comes to that stuff. She half the time you forget she's there until she goes and gets a 40 yard retrieve downwind. So it was cool to see. I enjoy, you know, he hunts more with dogs. I don't have a dog, so, but it, it's definitely inspiring. That's for sure. A lot of time though, it, you can tell the work he puts in it doesn't come overnight. March, 2007, Coot will be six years old. What you think, Coot? And uh, just you know, through the off season from, really from the, uh, from March to September. Uh, you know, we train pretty much every day. Look, he's landed. You want to shoot for him? <laughs> huh? Did you think he hit Do you want to shoot for him? I didn't see any.
That is a colorful, colorful hen. Save that hen, Bri. Okay, you want it? Yeah. Who's the eye? Notice I wait till there was a hole in the decoys. And like Jeff who shoots my decoys. I was being courteous. Yeah, look at that eye. That's hot. They come in here for you. Nice. Did you aim at that one? No, at the man. Yeah. I didn't think so. Standing at the Drake and watch, watch, he's watch. coming back. <laughs> Standing at the Drake and killed the hen. Stole the hen. Good girl. He's aiming for the Drake. Good girl. I don't know, man. I guess we're picking them off. Maybe well, that's fine. I, that's fine. I just weather's <laughs> good for taping. We got pizza delivered out here, maybe? <laughs> no, we'll save up for some crafts. Yeah, yeah. so how you do a mount it? I mean, stable mount. Holy moly! Look at that. Yeah. Oh, stay up here. You're all right. Oh. Drop. Drop. Good girl, good. That's a nice one, huh? Yeah, yeah. Man. Too bad they don't get too long down here, though. No, nah, that's yeah. what I've heard. Yeah. That was actually a nice one. You know what? What is it? It's uh, December 18th. 18th. It's about 67 January, degrees. January 18th. You can you add a whole whole bunch more to that. Add 10 inches that. I'm telling you, they grow. They really do. That's a nice one. He is. He's got his. He's got the three colors through his head. Yeah. I like One, that two, gray. three. Got a little bit of mustard through his crown. I think you're a neat looking bird. Sweet. Thank you, sir. Surely. Get him, Ryan. Ow! 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 Kill, kill Get him, Ryan. Birds, man. Explain to me how you missed, Ryan. I've been sea duck hunting for a few years and I've never shot an old squad. I shot my first old squad down in Maryland to death after missing about 40 of them. It was pretty bad. <laughs> it's not necessarily harder to shoot any type of bird per se, but just the conditions. It was really windy, you know, and they fly pretty quick and I was just shooting poorly so I missed quite a bit. I probably shot them. 20 plus times that old squad and didn't even hit a feather. It was pretty sad. I shot two and a half birds in three days and about 40 shells. I'm on fire. Yeah, actually the one that I shot, I shot at it and it just kept flying and I'm like, apparently I missed it and then it just, I must have long shot it and then it just fell out of the sky and died and I was like, sweet, I got one. Well, it was a nice drake, I was pretty happy. And we also shot some brant. I got a nice brant this year too, which I've not shot before. It was all brant? So it was pretty cool, it was a good trip. These are brave. Moving pretty fast, I think. Watch these six, right? They're all committed. You can get in. Better kill them. Take them.
is my first brand <laughs> ever. Down here with Jeff Coates. We'll get a picture of it. It's December. We're down in Maryland with uh, Jeff Coates of Pit Boss Waterfowl. We came down in October and shot some Skoder. And I uh, just shot my first brand ever. And uh, Bill got a nice double there. Yeah. Just had a nice First double coming. on brand. Came right in. That's my first one, so. Nice shooting, guys. I'm happy. Yeah. Even if I don't get another one, it was a good day. Beautiful bird. I missed Old Squaw horribly yesterday. <laughs> I missed six, seven birds, and I was like, I'm done. I spent, put the camera down and let my brother shoot, and today I got my first brand, so I'm happy. And hopefully we'll get some more. It's a nice day out. Jeff got approached by the state, I guess. They were doing two different studies, one about the brand and one about just all species of bird. They were basically, you know, testing these birds for bird flu, not to like, you know, not because they were scared of a huge outbreak. They're just closely monitoring that type of thing. So, uh... He's coming to fix swab them real quick for avian flu. What happened? There was those ducks that died out there in uh, Iowa. What happened to them? Anybody know? That, that I don't know. That was Idaho, wasn't it? Idaho, Iowa. Supposedly they could take out of the pesticide from the pond. It's a real isolated incident. It had a little bit of people upset there for a minute or two. We were thinking that it was like BT corn or something that somebody spilled or something, you know? You know, the guy came from the state and he, uh, you know, every day when Jeff gets some birds in the boat, he'll call him up and he'll meet him and he comes down and takes the samples and you know, they, they do a swab and they're basically, that's who they're monitoring these birds that they know might have come into contact with other birds. You have to sample birds within 24 hours of being shot. Okay. And then once you sample them, you have to get the samples to the lab within 48 hours. Now what do you do? Now, uh, once we take the samples, we have a, we just keep them on uh, blue ice packs. Yeah until we take them to the lab. We have some paperwork we have to do, and then uh, we'll take these samples to the lab and they'll test them. We keep the media, generally, keep, keep it frozen until we actually sample. Yep. You know, you'll have these birds that are in Chesapeake Bay and New England and stuff, and they go up to Greenland and Iceland, and you also have birds that come up from Europe and, uh, you know, England and, and stuff like that. You know, they all merge on the breeding grounds up north. So there's a chance that they might intermix. They said in Alaska, the you know, the greatest risk of where it coming. Uh, anything, that, if you look at like Asia, where those birds go and our birds go and they intermingle, that's what they're, that's what they're trying to check. So they had it over there. Yeah, exactly. So the sea ducks have the best, you know, like the biggest chance, I guess they think maybe bringing the disease closer to home. You know, pretty much every state is, is involved in, in sampling. Um, what we're trying to do is maximize, you know, the, the, the you know, species that we have here, um, you know, like Old Squaw and Brant and those type of birds that, you know, you might not see many other places. So that was cool to see, you know, something different and they approach, like I said, they approach Jeff because they know, you know, he gets the birds and, you know, it's, it's kind of like they just want a consistent thing every, you know, so many birds that they wanted to test that came from the area over the course of, you know, the six months or whatever the season is. Has anybody found yet in, in the U.S.? No. No, nothing. Never been out here, so it was definitely a cool experience. Schmizo! <laughs> <laughs>